Welcome back to Salty Reflections with Stephanie and Oliver Chavis. We are walking along the beach in South Carolina today and I have picked up a couple little goodies already and I hope you guys enjoy the walk and y'all come on with us. I see another beauty right here I want to show you guys before we head down to the water's edge. We've been having some really extreme high tides so we're hoping that it's washed up some beauties. We're only about a week past Ophelia coming by the outskirts of South Carolina coast. So we're hoping maybe she pushed up some things for us to see and show you guys. And I think the tides that we've been having their high moon are high tide super moon, full moon tides. A lot of even the roads and stuff in the low country right now have been flooded and before we head down there, I'm already seeing another little small well right there. So I see it. Oh, I do see it. That's a pretty one too. You can see where nice. it's washed all up here with the sea foam around it. And lots of the little common shells that we see uh, out here washed up today on this beach. Yeah, I'm seeing tons and tons of these oyster shells. Um, this one here's an arc. Of course, this is an oyster. That's an oyster. This is an oyster. Even that little orange one there, that's an oyster. That's an arc there. Oliver was sitting over there at us here. Piece of a broken shark eye shell. Lots of broken up stuff out here along this area. And what we're going to do is venture down here to the low tide area kind of walk that stretch because we're right at low tide it's almost low tide now so we're going to hit that area first and then venture back up this high tide line back to our boat and there's a cockle and you can see where a lot of the sea foam is washed up here and the sea foam is a good thing for our area because that means our our water systems and stuff it's healthy got a little tide pool with a few oysters in it and look how stretched out this big beach is from up here where the normal high tide line is down to the water's edge is a hundred yards of beach to explore Look here, buried. Oh, buried in the sand. Let's see. Oh, and it is whole. Oh, nice. packed in with sand. Oh, mud. That mud there, not really sand. Yuck. I'm gonna rinse it off when we get to the water's edge. Rinse it off and give you ladies and gents a better look at it right stuff yeah it's pretty dark in color on the outside anyway but it's just got a bunch of mud on the inside of it and i want to leave that mud and sand here on the beach as much as possible and for all of you that are watching give stephanie a shout out today today is stephanie's birthday happy birthday to me got a pretty cockle just kind of plain That was a bright orange colored oyster shell. One of the saltwater mussels. Oh. 
That mud doesn't want to come out very easy. And you can see it was like the little stripes that we normally see on the knobbed whelks, but it has been stained from the mud and the sediment that has been sitting in for years. And I tried to rinse it out, but it's actually still got lots of mud down in it because that mud's not just rinsing out. It's gonna have to dry out. That fluff mud is not like the sand. It is sticky and doesn't just rinse away. That's right. There's a shark eye shell I just picked up. Moon snail? It is a type of a moon snail. And it has the characteristic little hole here in the side where another... Um, univalve? Yeah, another univalve has started to drill into that. Sucked the life right out of this tail. Yeah, that's right. Look at that pin shell and the colors on it. How about this cockle right here with the orange in it? Good representation of the Florida cockle. And we'll apologize for the shadows. We are here late in the afternoon today. It was as soon as we could get out here today. And we don't have much time this afternoon before the sun will be setting. So unfortunately the shadows will be in the um, view as we walk down today. Uh, just a big broken olive. See if we can find some whole ones. And here's a piece of the pin shell again. You can see it's actually the sawtooth pin shell. You can see those little hooks and little barbs almost that are sticking off of it and this one is see-through so thin lots of moisture of stuff right up here there's nothing down here right here by the water's edge so we just look right up there oh i see that whelk nice you see those points on it right there wow. so we'll be lying towards it these are some of our favorite shells that we find out here which are fairly common to this beach here in South Carolina. Not so common on all the beaches that you'll venture out to, but we love them because of the size of them and the different colors and variety. Awesome. And Got lots I'm of gonna run and right creams. down. I wanna run right down to the water's edge and I'm gonna put this shell in the water. Steph, I see another one right there behind you. It's kind of white right there. Not sp oh, I do see yep. it. Check that one out. Yep, it's already bleached out. You can see it's lost all of its color. And I'm going to dip this thing down in the water, and I want y'all to see, you know, the difference in these shells. And there's another right there, right in the center. Yep, that one's kind of worn. A lot of the knobs are a little more smoothed out, and it's actually broken pretty good on the tip. So that's one I'm gonna leave for the hermit crab. There are lots of other shells out here and lots of broken pieces. As you can see, there are tons of broken pieces of shells out here. So there are plenty of different shells that the hermit's crabs can use at times. But I am gonna leave some of those broken ones for the hermits. Not that they need us to. Most of them are out in the water switching shells anyway. Look at there, how beautiful. Just by being wet and another way to keep these shells looking like that is if you ever find a shell and it's kind of dull in color you can dip it in a muriatic acid it'll get that outer coating off of it and you can also uh put in some mineral oil on it yeah that mineral you know, oil will keep it shiny for a period of time and then you may have to do it again after a few months right that's so, right found some fishing debris trash and we'll put that in the wagon take it back with us so I'm, I'm surprised to see this many shells in this little bit of distance already 
Yeah, especially since when we first got here, right where we um, unloaded the boat and right in the other areas, there were a couple boatloads of people. So um, they must not have been shell hunting too much or either they just missed these in the area. Just like we say all the time, there's so many shells out here when we're walking around. There's no way to gather up all the shells that are out here. Look at the size here. of that cockle. Yeah, that is a big one. Oh, look at the wormholes inside I'm of it. This one up here. Isn't and, that neat? And I'm seeing another nice blue whale right there, Steph. Oh, I do see you it. Can go that way and I'll grab this oh, and I see another one over here. Let's go this direction too. And I see a little pitted one here. Pitted and got the boring sponge hole. I mean the yeah, the boring sponge holes in it. And check out that one. This is not the one that he mentioned, but that's a pretty one. There you go. There you go, ladies. Check that air out. This cockle. Very big and beautiful. This one here, we normally don't keep a lot of the cockles, but, but because of the size and the colors in it, I'm going to keep it right. So. That's right. Just put it right and in right there. Right there was the other and That's the one color. that he saw, the blue one. And once it's wet, it's almost like a black and blue. It does. Excuse me. It does have one little um, busted up hole in it. So that would be a negative for a hermit crab. Because it would only be able to live in that small little spot there. And when it's sitting in your collection like that, you'll never see that hole. And I'm super excited. One of our previous shelling videos that Steph and I put out here lately. I think some of the ladies and stuff helped us share it on the you know their platforms or whatever that happened i really can't say what happened but steph that video is up to over 260,000 views now which is and, amazing thank you guys you know steph is she's very informative on shells and i give her the credit for everything you know i myself try to take our videos and upload them to youtube and everything but she's the mind behind you know what we find and she's helped me a lot and also the ladies and gentlemen that are watching the channel have really you know taught me a lot and we can pass that information on to others also yeah we are thankful we are thankful for the ones of you guys who help us with ids whenever we're not sure of the shell ids and over time y'all have helped teach us quite a bit and truly thankful for the ones that help share the videos because you know by i'm getting some views you know it helps us you know to be able to come out here and share more videos with y'all that's right and i see another really big pretty beauty right there oh my goodness wow so maybe ophelia has washed us in some goodies look how yellow the inside of that one is either ophelia or just these big moon tides maybe one way or the other we're um, glad for it and this beach i'm looking down through here and just look it, it is, loaded is loaded with shells and we, we can't tell exactly you know what it is until we get closer and i'm sure the people that don't want this area they just didn't see all the stuff that we're picking up that's right they probably gathered up their own things and i'm going to check out this tide pool here is why i'm going walking this what direction for a moment just because i want to see if there's anything hiding in here because things will get washed up into holes and divots and it's a little deeper than I thought it was, so I really can't see down in it very well. And this is natural for our waters here in South Carolina. They are not um, what's considered bright or blue or clear water or anything like that. We do have a lot of life and algae growth in our waters. So the brown and green colors that you see in the South Carolina waters um, it's not dirty water, even though we call it dirty water or muddy water. Sometimes it is muddier than others, but it is the, the natural water for our area. Our waters do get a lot clearer during the winter time when a lot of the algae is not able to survive the cold temperatures. But during the warm winter, I mean, during the warm summer months, there is a lot of algae and just life in the water the plankton that tons and tons of marine life live off of look at the points on that very stuff. tall gorgeous and some of these shells they're naturally just whelk shells like 
the knob welts what they're called and then some of them if you see this little hump on them that's probably going to be a counter welt that's right the counter welt and i love the color of this blue muscle right here i don't know if you can see that shimmer and sheen in the camera light i hope so but that is a blue muscle so that's a really pretty one Stuff. While we're out here, let's let's share a few of the comments that people have been leaving you on the videos. Some of the ones that kind of strike you, and tell these ladies, you know, something about what some of these things are. Like one of the things that a lady had asked Stephanie, well, what do you do when you have to use the bathroom? <laughs> yes, well, I said I turned the camera off. That's right. Got a slipper shell right here. And my hands are really sandy and now, so it's kind of hard to see. Let me wipe it on my pants. I don't mind a little beach sand on my pants. It didn't really come clean it off too well, but it is very thin. Little slipper shell. We just I see two welts right here. Be kind of hilarious to us. You know, we are out here on the barrier island. Uh, by boat and there is no public restroom to go to right stuff. no you're right no public restroom so you do what you do in nature it's just the way it is at this summertime you know maybe you just walk down in the water that's right oh pretty moon snail he's pointing out Love that little black coloration on the front of it. The shark eye, moon snail. Pretty knob welt at the same time. Lots of beauties out here. It is. Some, some arcs, oysters. Just kind of give you a closer up view of what we're seeing as we're walking by. Lots of those common ones. Lady's finger. Yep, the razor clam, jackknife razor clam actually, and it's a little chipped and broken on the side. Ooh, that would have been a really big shark eye here. It is broken, of course, as you can see, but that's a big one. And like I mentioned earlier, that one's still a great one for a hermit shell. I mean, a hermit crab, they can get inside that shell and still have plenty of coverage. Stop. And check out the position of that one right there beside you also, Stop. I see it. All right, and I picked up this little lightning whelk right here. It is broken, but that is a really pretty lightning whelk. close up that that shell is positioned there by nature. Just standing up there on its own. And I'm assuming it must have twisted up right as the water was going out from it because I do see here where it looks like maybe something else was laying beside it or something or maybe a animal or something moved it around but you can see where it was standing up just like that. But I do see the imprints of where it probably had been laying till that last wave on its way out twisted it around or something like that. And also while we got you on here, check out the merch, um, the shirts and stuff and right above the description of the videos for any of you ladies that might be interested in some of the designs. These are pictures that we've taken right here in South Carolina and just designs that Stephanie has come up with to share with others that's interested in our merchandise. That's right. And people ask me all the time, where can they get the merch and things like that? And if you're watching the video, it should show up right underneath the video if you're watching it in the long form. Um, or if not, there's links on our channel that go to all the merch and different ways to contact us and all that sort of thing. Check out this one. Look at the anomaly on it. It's got a curve here at the bottom. And lots of pitted holes where a boring sponge has got a hold of this shell and sucked out some of its nutrients that's right 
But look at that curve. That's quite a, a curvaceous shell there. <laughs> voluptuous. Our treasures are adding up already with you guys, you ladies. It's voluptuous like me. Curvy. Plenty of curves. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, look at that blue one right there. Oh, Berry. Beautiful. Man, we're having better luck today than we've had in a while out yeah. here, right? So, we can venture out to these beaches sometimes and hardly find anything. This same beach, and now today, just for some reason, the ocean has been churning and we're finding tons of treasures and glad you are here to see them with us. Look right there, the point sticking up right here. Get a good close up of that one stuff. And this nice and tall, the points on it, all the points are perfect. And you see they start right here and the whorls go out and they keep spreading further and further out. And those spikes are beautiful. And it's just a nice beige color. Not a lot of, you know, bright colors on it or anything it's kind of a salmon peach color when it's wet you see i just wet it with my fingers there out of the water that was inside of it while it was sitting there and another thing about this shell is the lip of it right here there's no little chips breaks or anything yeah, which makes perfect. it special right it is it's almost perfect uh oh how about that one right up there stuff give them a look at that one right up there right there we're loading up with shells. Oh, it's over there. Beautiful, and you can see where the sunlight has kind of dried it out, I guess. Wow, look at the orange on it. And it's got one little chip right there on its lip, but other than that, it's pretty perfect too, with really tall points. Let me use some of its water to try to whitewash it a little bit so you can see the colors. Gorgeous. How else can you describe these beauties? Gorgeous, gorgeous. And again, all these shells that we're passing on the ground, you can see lots of talons. We've got several little talons right here. Razor clam, arcs, cockles. Um, oysters the blue mussels a pretty orange cockle there packed in with sand but look at that color on it isn't it pretty no but this one maybe oh it is oh that little dark one that one's pretty wow and you know when they're all filled in with sand like that, they are empty. Of course, if it had the actual whelk still in it, it would be full all the way to the edge. Gee, but can you imagine? Look at this right. right here, ladies. Look, look what size it's broken. But just look at what size this shell would have been. Wow, how gorgeous it would have been. Another comment that um i'm thinking about right now is that um one of the ladies had asked us uh do we ever find shark's teeth out here and the answer to that is very 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 seldom i don't know why but this beach right here we do not see a lot of shark's teeth no and look at this color of that one the blue and the orange and it and what caused all these little rings on it right i would here? say it's barnacles Barnacles. See where there's a few barnacles still on it right there. And these are just and those are just popped off. Yeah, because like if you pop those off, it just leaves those little rings that are on it. So that's a unique look to that shell. And you see there's one barnacle still on it right there, and I'm gonna leave that on there. Those other ones were just really little and and they're dried out. I could prick them off with my fingers just like I did the other, but I'm gonna leave them. We like to leave our shells natural for the most part. And don't turn yet, I see another right here. Let me make sure it, no, it's it looks broken. broken. Yeah. Yep. Well, well. I had spotted that myself. Just a broken piece. You guys feel stuff. See another little broken piece of an orange one.
And I'm seeing down here above these uh, old uh, Spartina grass roots, uh, really, really thick shell uh, line up there. And when we get there, we usually find lots of olives and stuff. And maybe today we'll be lucky to see some of those also. Something we haven't spotted yet today is a whole sand dollar. We do see lots of sand dollars in our area at times. And matter of fact, if you're on our beaches in South Carolina and you're out in the water, especially at lower tides, you're likely to come across a lot of live sand dollars. Just remember it is illegal to take any live seashells off the beach. And that goes for almost every beach that I'm aware of in almost every single country. And matter of fact, there's actually a lot of beaches and areas that are protected that you can't take any shells from. So always just be cautious to where you're at and check the rules in your area. Make sure you're in an area where you can actually be on the beach or take the shells from the beach. And ladies, in the comments, I mean, there's a lot of people reading the comments. If you uh, live or go on or visit one of those beaches where you cannot take shells, can you please leave it in the comments so that when others visit those areas, they'll know that they are not allowed to take shells from those beaches. Yeah, we have, we have several um, protected areas in South Carolina. And as far as all the ones I know of, they're marked um, that you can't take those, you know, that or that they're private beaches. They're marked like that on maps and such as stuff like that. that would have been or either they have signs up around them. Bright orange well. Oh, that would have been. Oh, it was, and it's broken. Womp, womp. That was a pretty one too. Oh, look at this one. It's kind of bleached out. You want a lot of stuff. Yeah, we're finding lots of them. I see another one right up above us too. Right here to the left? Yep. Right the one you spotted? Yep. So some of them are pretty muted in colors like that one right there today, but still beautiful to us. Oh, look at there, and I'm going to wet it back in that water that came out of it so you can see the color. Take a look at those points. They're spread out pretty good. They are. And it's got one little teeny one here in between those two that was kind of starting. I wonder if these points, I often wonder if that has anything to do with the age of the shell. I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure. I know this part does. The width of how far it grows out from this um, siphonal canal. I know that part does have a, a part to play in the age. I've, I've talked to a lot of people about trying to figure out how old whelk shells are and I haven't really come up with a lot of information about the whelk. The conch and things like that that are down in Florida and the Bahamas, those have a lot more information out there versus just the whelk. I like the pattern on the back side of that right there, the way it's darker. And look at that little lip right here. Yeah, you don't the hardly, growth ring. Yeah, you don't hardly see them like that. See where what we're talking about? This actually has a, a ring right here like an edge. it almost looks like two shells have stuck together so we were mentioning this growth wearing and lost a little bit of time with the camera the battery going dead so we brought you right back on and you can see that growth ring and then when i got to looking at this one closely this one has one right along that edge also that's something that i've really never noticed about them like this one here doesn't have one at all all the way down here on the edges okay and this one is chilled but i kept it because of the inside so you guys that didn't get a, a good view of that earlier now that we're a little bit in the sun and the gopro was overheating in its um foam wrapper that we have it in to keep the wind noise down so you may hear a little more wind noise now we apologize for that but we are going to try to keep you guys coming along with us on our adventure um but of course with the camera overheating either i take it out of the the wrap and you guys hear some wind noise or i have to cut you guys off so 100 percent certain i knew you guys did not want us to turn you off but y'all would rather hear a little bit of the actual wind noise and the beach noise versus being turned off. And check this one out. It's one we haven't shown yet. And this pretty common shell here. It is chipped on the side. And we've looked at several in the past videos for those of you guys who are familiar with our channel and used to coming on beach walks with us. This is the sailor's ear, or also called the channeled duck clam. 
it's a fragile shell. Of course, it's a bivalve, so it has another half. Or it did have another half, I should say. It doesn't now. So here is one of the false angel wings. Another false little angel wing, as well as the little owl up there. Kind of muted in colors, but that's still pretty. And check out this oyster. It's one big oyster with lots of little oysters growing on it, attached to it. So that's pretty cool. And these oyster shells, they are great for doing crafts and a lot of things like that. Oh, gorgeous. Let me put these fines in here Before first. Before you show them that beauty laying over there, here's a, just a few more faded out olives that I've picked up while I was ahead of staff. Look at that little orange razor point. Yeah, But this is the beauty we're trying to get to over here. Oh, look at that orange in it. And while we're right here by this tide pool, I'm gonna rinse it off so you guys can really see this shell right here come to life. Look at the colors on that beauty. How gorgeous. the inside of that. Can you check that out? Gorgeous. I love that dark line right there where that orange starts. Absolutely beautiful. And I have to take a moment to give thanks to the YouTube platform for recommending our videos to ladies and people all over the world. We're getting comments from people all over the world. They're landlocked people. Or there may be some people that just, you know, have never been to a beach and stuff. Or maybe they were able to go to the beach at one time and they're not able to do it now. And they're getting to see this stuff through our eyes or the stuff that we're videoing. I'm truly thankful for YouTube and the YouTube platform. Yeah, buddy. Because if it weren't for them allowing us to put present videos to you in this format, you guys wouldn't be able to come to the beach with us. Over 17,000 subscribers and we're still moving up. Thank you guys. Thank you ladies. We have worked hard for it. It's been going on four and a half years of working hard and putting videos on YouTube in order to um, bring our adventures to you guys. But we certainly appreciate you guys that have subscribed and our viewers and watch. And I mentioned it um, before and I actually said it incorrectly. But YouTube tells us that only about 12% of you guys that are watching are subscribed. So that means 88% of you guys that are watching have not clicked that little button, subscribe, to come along with us with all our videos. Do it, just do it, it's free, hit the button. And if you really wanna come along on our videos, hit the little bell next to that subscribe button. So a little broken piece of plastic. I was hoping it was sea glass, but it's actually a piece of plastic. And I get the question a lot about sea glass too. We rarely ever find sea glass on this beach. And I guess in a way that's a good and a bad thing because of course usually beaches that have a lot of sea glass means there's a lot of debris out in those oceans. You know, glass has been broken over time. Sometimes it's from shipwrecks and all that sort of thing. But we don't really have that here. So I guess, you know, it's kind of bittersweet in a way. This is kind of unique because it's got this 
oyster just attached to it. That's right. And it is hung to it and grow to it and it is solid. It's not gonna come off. And that's what's ha that what happens in our area when the oysters are uh, I guess you call it reproducing. They're putting out uh, sperm and when that sperm attaches to hard objects it'll grow about anywhere whether it's pylons, shells, bricks, blocks, rocks, That's right. anything of hard structure of those oyster shells and we are loaded with oyster shells here in South Carolina. We sure are. Oh man look at that broken piece of tulip. Tulips are not a shell we find here a lot so man. If you ever broken get a piece. chance to try some of our oysters and you love eating oysters you need to try the South Carolina oysters because our salt salinity, the salt salinity in our waters here is very high salt salinity. So our oysters have a natural salty taste to them. They're some of the best in the world. Yeah, very highly sought after. Um, the South Carolina oyster industry is booming. So I picked up a couple shark eyes there. And look at that one, how that one's broken. It just looks like it would have been a big, a small shark eye, but look how it's actually broken. And would have been quite a large one. Some little small ones. And I'm seeing, of course, lots of broken shells. Lots and lots of broken shells as, you, as we get close to the ground. I know you guys can see them. Lots of broken shells. And that's a leaf there, guys, not a piece of brown sea glass. Little olive. bracelet and that's just a made-up name I have no idea what the real name of this is but I've been calling this a mermaid bracelet for a long time just because that's what it looks like it would be to me and it's actually a worm casing that covers itself in these coquina shells kind of as a camouflage and this one of course has been dislodged and is no longer attached to the seafloor which is where it would have naturally been Oliver is venturing out through the muddy areas and you guys can see these clams that are everywhere. A lot of them are covered up by the mud. Now look at that little murex right under there. It does have a little hermit crab in it right there. It has a little hermit crab in it, so I'm not going to mess with him, but it is a little murex. Oh, and I see a broken shark eye walking right there. So that is a hermit you know, crab that is inside that broken shell. Oh, there was about five or six little fellows right here running all around, but when I started moving, they kind of quit messing with each other. Those two. Are y'all fighting, buddy? Play nice, play nice. Oop, I got that close to the wagon and started talking to y'all and didn't get to put my stuff in it. And look at that little beauty. It has a hermit in it as well. I am gonna pick it up so you guys can see exactly how small it is. But you see the little hermit crab that's in it. I'm gonna put you right back, buddy. Sorry for bothering you. Our saltaholics wanted a good view of you. So in this area, you can see there's lots of oysters, mussels sticking straight up. So you definitely don't want to walk through these areas where these roots are barefooted because those shells that are underneath there that you can't see or that you may see and just not be thinking about will cut you up pretty good. Like all that right there cut you and I do have shoes in the wagon some of you guys mentioned that occasionally 
I just try to walk gingerly. I don't know about you guys, but I like to feel the sand beneath my toes. When I'm on the beach, I like to feel the sand. So when I have to cross over areas that could be um, curious, I am just really careful. And check that out. I came across right at the right spot, found that little olive there. I'm trying to rinse it off. It has a little broken chip on the edge, but I'm okay with that. Let's see. Oh, I thought that was a broken piece, but it is whole. Awesome. Oliver's calling us over, so he must have found something pretty cool. Yeah, with the position of this shell right here, I'm sure that there is probably a hermit in it. But look at how it's just positioned here. Actually, it is empty. Got stuck up on the root? Yep. Yeah, it must have got stuck up on the root as the tide washed it washed back away. Let me make sure. You don't see anything, I do don't you? see anything. What is that? This is a channeled well. You can see where it's very round across the top versus... Um, the knobs. The knob whelk has, of course, these knobs. And this is the counter whelk, actually, the, the counter knob whelk. Well, that's the first uh, channel whelk that we found out here today, it right? It is. It is. And I'm holding it up and looking through it. I can actually see where there's just a, a level line of sand across the outside. Those channel whelks, they are a little um, more fragile than the knob whelk are actually very dense and are very difficult to break and sometimes when we see how the ones are broken that we find I'm like what broke that shell because it's so thick but now the channel well they're pretty thin so they will break pretty easily i put it in my fragile container can you grab this wagon for a second I can't. i'm going to walk right out here show these ladies how the erosion is occurring right here on this beach and also just take a look down in this water's edge with you and see if there may be a big shell or something that has dropped off here. I would say this little welt right here has got some of the nicest colors of any one that we have found today. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a small one. Only it's about it's width. What, three inches? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to put it down in the water of this one right here to try to wet it some so they can see those colors even better. Gorgeous. And check out that one too. 
check out this one. That's unique. It's, it's pretty muted and worn and beat up on the outside. Yeah, it's got a, a knob that's a little anomaly there. Looks like it had a malfunction when it was growing. But check that out. It's covered with oysters on the inside. And those are attached. Kind of like that one that was hanging out at the bottom of that one earlier. That one is attached on the, these are attached on the inside. So very unique. That's a really pretty little one there. Broken. Look of air. Fooled me. Dag nabbit. Check this one out though. Oyster shell. And look how white. Hard on that one. Yeah, they spread pretty far. Yeah, the big separation there between that top one and the others. Yeah, it's a beauty though. We love big shells and we cannot lie. Look at there. Look how this one is just cracked all across there. gonna say that Ophelia has pushed these babies in. From somewhere far offshore or either as she was coming by with these big huge tides we've been having eroded them out of the sand from where they have been resting for a long time. And look at all these oyster shells as we walk up to this well. Broken olive there. Couple broken shark eye shells, tons and tons of oysters. Not pretty little whelk. Whelk, whelk, whelk. It's been a great whelky day. different unique type of bottle it is glass uh, it is a screw top so not super old but definitely a unique shape will be really cute with our other bottles full of seashells yeah i don't think we're gonna get any of this one. Oh, was it teeny tiny yeah, hole this must have been like an old cologne bottle oh this one looks like it must be just for augers that's about the only thing that will fit in it and i see i spy Someone lost an ear on the beach. How about that little beauty right there? My baby's ear. 
for this bottle. It's so unique. It's got these lines and ridges in it. And almost all glass bottles are antiques now, right? Yeah. Even if this is screw top, it can be an antique these days. I'm gonna put that back there by my flip flop so maybe they don't get, doesn't get broken, hopefully. Here. Look how black that shark eye was. Of course, it's broken. You can see the inside whirl, the little holes of it. But all the way down to that little tiny spot right there. So, even though we don't like to really see broken shells, of course, we do see tons of broken shells. And it's always cool to see, you know, how it is on the inside. It's kind of a how it's made type of thing. Would have been a big one. Or it was a big one before it got broken. Look at these oysters. Look at that. Look how black that one is. This type always reminds me of the feet of little crafts when I see them. I just found a dollar. What? A sand dollar? Mermaid money? What else was this oh, yeah. Yeah. Been running around it and stuff, so. I see it. Beautiful. Look at that mermaid money. Mermaid money. Gorgeous. And of course, being this color, you know it is deceased. Has been for quite a while. Right? What now? Five hole keyhole. That's dollar. right, the five hole keyhole sand dollar. I almost dropped it, which it definitely would have broke if it fell on the ground from this height. Good catch. If I say so myself. A little olive. Got a little busted up on the edge. Jackknife razor clam. What my granny always called the lady's finger because you can kind of see it almost looks like it's a finger or a fingernail hit the subscribe hit the like and we want to go ahead at this time and just thank you so much for coming along with us on our videos that's right thank you thank you thank you for spending the day showing with us whether it happens to be morning noon night or somewhere in between when you're watching Thanks for going along with us. And please share these videos because there's other ladies out here. They're not able to get out on the beaches and stuff. We're seeing it in the comments and stuff like I was telling you. And I know they would truly be thankful to be able to come out on the beach even if it's through our eyes or through our videos. I know they're, they're waiting on it. And again, muted colors, well worn oyster growing out of it Look at that and tree. i have people ask me different questions about you know why do you keep this why do you keep so many mainly because i just choose to so that's the answer for the most part and when you're out walking on the beach if it's one of those beaches where you are allowed to pick up shells guess what you can keep whatever you want to if you don't want to keep it put it back down somebody behind you might want to keep it the true, the true answer to that question is we're shell hoarders. That's right. <laughs> right here. And we get a lot of questions too about the this wagon and us walking over them. So you guys, you see that it just rolled right here, rolled right over this oysters right here. And you know, they're fine. The, this sand, it, it rolls right over them. These, it's fine. You see most of these shells out here are broken to begin with. Oh, another nice shark eye. Yep. And believe me, watch this. Go over that shell right there, Oliver. And I just picked it up and I, I want that shell. But do yes, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. If I had shoes on, I would man, do it. They, then I'd be like, No, I'm not going to do it. But I'm not going to get no bad comments about well, this. You want me to do it? I'll pull right over top of it. Watch. Right there. Okay. It's Nothing cool. happened. It rolled right over top of it and that oyster shell on top of each other. It's and late. guess what? It's fine. I was holding a little bit of pressure off the mag. <laughs> no, well. Now, the welt shells are very, very They are very tough. tough. We have decided, you know, we are gonna try to end this video properly for you guys. There's a GoPro battery, it is dead.
Uh, this is all the finds that we're going to show you guys or be able to take you on on this part of the video because we want to share other journeys with you also so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up share it with others there's probably tons of people and ladies out here that would really appreciate you being a part of this channel and sharing the video so that they can watch it also. We appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our Patreons and our channel members for helping make this channel possible. We appreciate every one of you, the viewers, subscribers, all of you combined make this happen. So we, we love you guys. Stay safe. God bless you all. We definitely couldn't do it without you. That's right. You're, you're the viewers. You're the watchers. You're that are letting us know what you want to see and we're just putting in the effort to try to keep bringing the videos to you.